Very simple idea, but incredibly handy. Hello, this is BJ from Hearns Hobbies. Welcome to a new product tutorial. I'm gonna be looking at the brand new Green Stuff World Brush Rinser. So this is actually quite a very, well, quite a very, that sounds a bit strange, doesn't it? But that's how I felt when I first saw this. It's a very simple device, which quite a game changer, I think. Perhaps you can't really see much there, but all I'm gonna do is I'll show you from the top camera, you'll have a closer look at what I'm looking at. Okay, so there's a box for the brush washer. So we have a box down the bottom with a water reservoir, and then that feeds down into a little well and this little well is where you clean your brushes and a little button there and you press that and that's where it i guess flushes and in a way this is a bit like a toilet and then it gets a fresh lot of water okay we'll look on the sides you got this big button there's a little well and it's got some ridges in the side so you can help clean your brushes there's the uh, little reservoir carries 250 mils and then there's the base which collects all of your waste water Okay, let's have a closer look at what you get inside the box. Okay, so here's the main unit, the square box section. You hear some things rattling around because the actual um, valve and the push button are still inside because I'll show you how they go together. So there's a box, it comes apart like so. It's actually very deep how it holds it together here. That's really important so you don't actually spill all your wastewater. And there you go. All right, so you've got the, the base here. And then you've got the push button, the screw, and the valve the lever there. Now, apart from that, you also get the reservoir, which is this little bottle here, and the cap itself. Okay, so let me show you how it goes together. Very simple, really. It just has one screw. It's a Phillips head screw. And we're just going to be screwing the valve. So the valve actually has a silicon part here. Make sure that you don't lose that or drop it off because that's the part that's gonna seal it and stop the water from dripping everywhere. Okay, make sure you get the two holes here to match the two marks there. Turn around so the rubber is actually facing this way. And you put that on here. Okay, so that's gonna seal it like so. And then the screw just goes into this hole, really simple. All right, so let's just screw it in place. Got my Phillips head screwdriver here. Really simple to assemble. Okay, so we're just gonna screw that in until it's just tight. You don't wanna over tighten anything like this because that can split the plastic. And that's your valve on. Next is the push button. So the push button already has a spring attached to it. it can come separately, make sure the spring's in there. And it has a small catch on the end. Now that catch is going to lock into this part here. And this is quite important to get right. So we're just gonna Push that in, okay? So the spring is going to be forcing that up. So you need to put a little bit of pressure. And as you're pressing it, you wanna make sure that that latch locks on this inside hole. So you just need to clip it together, like so. You see how those little legs have poked through. And that's your assembly, complete full of valve. Okay, so if we push this, you see how that valve opens to release the water, okay? All right, now let me show you how it all works. All right, we're just gonna put the cap on. Okay, so that's all together. Now we've got our water here. I've got a bottle of water here. But you can just fill it up with just some tap water. Let's pour a little bit there. And we've got the cap. Okay, so when you see the cap, the cap's actually got a little extension at this point. And you see how the shape is slightly different to the spout. It's very important that it fits in one particular direction. So that actually keys it to one point, And that's where the tunnel is for the water to travel. So you know that that tunnel bit here, it has to go on like this. You can't really fit it on any other way. If you fit it on any other way, it won't sit straight. Okay, and also you'll see water going everywhere and you'll know you got it wrong. But if you, it only fits in one way and it's perfectly flat. Okay, now this is a pressure fit. So you just make sure you push it on. Like so, even though the bottle has some threads on it, it is just a pressure fit. And then to load it on, it's simply, you need to have this upright. Okay, let's see it from the front camera. You need it upright and then you've got your bottle like so. Make sure that you've got locator there 
facing the right way. Sideways, you mount it on. And then you slowly tip it until it's level like this. And there we go. And then you see the water flowing inside and it's in the well there. Just like that. And then if we want to release it, you press a button, it releases, and then the well refills with fresh water. A really simple idea. How good is that? Now I thought I'd give you a, uh, a quick demonstration on how this really helps. Let's just zoom this out a little bit. Now for instance, if I were to be painting normally, I would just have a little container. Okay, maybe something bigger than this, but this is just for demonstration purposes. Let's put some water in it. And this would normally be my rinse water. Now some people have two of these. You have one for the main rinse, and then another one for the final rinse to, to clean up your brushes. Now we'll get some of this water-based paint. Okay, so bear in mind that we've got water in here, and this really works with water. If you use alcohols or solvents in here, there's a chance that it will damage the plastic. So really, only water-based. And it's generally water-based paints that you generally use this more, I would think, because when you're using a wet palette or you're blending with acrylics, you really need to change the colors quite often. Now I'm just trying to get this cap off, which is sort of stuck. There we go. All right, so let's get some paint. I've got a paintbrush here. There's one of those God Hand, big chunky style ones. Get a bit of paint in here. And then if we get a bit of paper, you can see how I've got the paint there. Get a bit more. Okay, so I've got the paint on the paintbrush. Now say some people use or clean their brushes in different ways. Sometimes you wipe it off. So if you wipe it off on a towel, it'll take off most of it, which is great because there's less chances of, I guess, contaminating your well. And then you just clean your brush in the well. Okay, so you can see that. So it's still collected quite a lot of paint on the inside of the brush. I'm just rubbing the brush against those side ridges. Okay, so it's just going to agitate it and help clear off all the paint. Now if we just gently do this to unload the paintbrush, and then over here, I wiped it, and that's pretty clean. Okay, so you've got dirty well, what do you do with that? We'll flush it. Look at that, you got fresh. And if we wanted a super clean brush, we could do that again. There we go. Super clean. And then you just flush it again. Now alternatively, if I was to use the old system where you just had a little container of water here. Now if I were to do this, clean it. See how it's already really dirty? And that really would be good to change it fairly quickly because otherwise this is going to start contaminating all your other paint that you, you put in here. So there you go, very simple indeed. Now that's with a big brush. Now let's see what it's like with a small brush. I think it's going to be pretty much the same, right? But here we've got a very fine brush. You're doing some detail work. Do the same thing. Just clean it up in here. Obviously a small brush doesn't have that, that much paint in it. And I think that's clean enough to use again. Okay, so if we did that again, and we did the color again, clean it up. That's still suitable to use. So depending on the size of the brush and how much it's loaded, depends on how often you need to flush it. So fine work, you can actually use that well for a while before you need to clean it. Now, if we moved on to something bigger, like that, and then cleaned it, you can imagine how much more paint is in there. Okay, so after that, you really want to flush that to keep it clean. And there we go. How good's that? So there you go. So that is my tutorial of the Green Stuff World brush rinser. Quite ingenious. Very simple idea, but incredibly handy. So I'm going to be having one of these on my workbench. It's going to be really useful. And all you got to do is push this. And there we go. It refills. Good stuff. 
Okay, so thank you very much for joining me. Uh, that was my tutorial on the Greensoft World brush rinser. Thank you very much.